The emerging threat of famine weed in South Africa has become a serious problem. A unique alien invasive species, famine weed is famous for its ability to grow in any vegetation soil type, impacting on subsistence farmers and livestock. Threatening the biodiversity, the alien invasive species surprised environmental specialists, including Dr. Ian McDonald, who has 14 years working experience with the environment. WAF TV News had a privilege of speaking to him about how quickly and densely the spread of the species was in South Africa. An alien species is a species that is brought by man from its native range into an area which was formerly outside that native range. But an invasive alien species is a totally different animal. It is an alien species that once brought into this new territory starts spreading of its own accord. And that's what is the crucial thing. An invasive alien species is a species that once brought out of its native range starts spreading in the areas into which it's been introduced. Parthenium hustophorus, or commonly known as famine weed, is an invasive alien species classified as Category 1B by the National Environmental Management and Biodiversity Act. In South Africa, the alien invasive species is today almost present in all nine provinces. However, the problem was first identified in KwaZulu-Natal, where WAF TV News undertook the journey to see just how severe the spread of famine weed is in the communities and what solutions were available to eradicate the alien invasive species. Well, the famine weed is uh, probably the most um, invasive alien plant anywhere in the world. It is remarkable in so far as it has almost all the worst characteristics of an invasive alien plant, all wrapped up into one particular species. It has got a tiny little seed that is transported by all manner of means. For example, it's spread by water and wherever it is uh, dropped, it germinates. And it is remarkable. This tiny little seed grows to full maturity in about a month. So in four weeks, you suddenly have a fully flowering plant where before you'd had no plant at all. Now that rate of growth is absolutely remarkable. Very few plants manage to complete their life cycle within four weeks. The battle to control famine weed was first displayed from a scientific view by researcher and project leader, Lorraine Strate, who says using insects originating anywhere in the world and introducing them to the biodiversity could be a formula to biocontrol famine weed. The use of natural enemies, which are introduced from the countries in which the plants, the invasive plants, originate. So if the plant originates from South America, we select insects, uh, mites and pathogens from that country or countries and introduce them into South Africa but only after an extended period in the quarantine facility when they are rigorously tested to make sure that they don't feed on any other plants, uh, native plants or economically important plants in our country. And once we've introduced, once we've tested those agents, then we are able to release them into South Africa should they prove to be suitably host specific, which means that they can only survive and feed on or Although biocontrol is a working formula, the cost of running it across South Africa is still a debate of time and resources. Unfortunately, famine weed will keep spreading into the communities, and that is why the communities decided on another approach, having programs that go about spraying the alien invasive species, which not only benefits the community in that it helps slow down the spread and growth of famine weed, but it also educates the community about the alien invasive species and uplifts it as well. Domokem Reserve is 10,000 hectares, but it's got different indigenous species. However, at the moment as we are here, I need to illustrate a few points regarding the patina that are invading the game reserve. The problem that we're facing is that the time they're dealing with alien plant, they're dealing in a short period of time. Okay, so by that way, the alien plant we are failing to control proper because if we want to control the, the patenium, we need to make sure that we control when they're shooting, not when they're in the position of growing in the, in the, in the older stage. So if we control in the early stage, we'll be able to fight. 
However, we're controlling most inside the park. We are not controlling outside the park as we're controlling inside the park. The pollination that coming from outside the gum reserve is invading again inside the park. So the, the work that we're doing at the moment is like we're working forward and backwards, working forward and backwards. So what we need to do at the moment, we need to have a team that's going to work outside and a team that are working inside. Given long enough, famine weed will end up uh, out competing the indigenous vegetation, and that is extremely bad for biodiversity. Fortunately, the biological control community in this country are extremely competent. They are some of the world's leading biocontrollers, and our expert biocontrollers in South Africa have already released two funguses, several insects that are very carefully tested through quarantine procedures to make sure that they're safe and these have already been released on famine weed here in South Africa. In the long term, we have to rely on effective biological control to control this weed. It is beyond the financial capacity of any government anywhere in the world to eradicate the species using chemicals or manual removal.